HTML and CSS factors. So let's go over the HTML and CSS factors that are affected with on-page optimization uh, when we're talking about the 200 plus Google ranking factor still. Um, so number 51 is the keywords in the page title. Does the page title contain the page's primary keyword? Now, of course, you know, we kind of know uh, what that's all about by now. Does the keyword start the page title? Uh, then do we have the keyword in the meta description? Uh, does the page's primary keyword appear in the meta description? Um, and if you'll kind of recall, we, we spoke a little bit about the, you know, the WordPress plugins and stuff like that. WordPress doesn't come with the default ability to um, edit the meta descriptions and stuff like that. Now, if you don't have the meta description edited, that's okay because Google's going to kind of grab whatever it finds if you don't. Uh, uh, but you can install the Yoast SEO plugin and there's a, a link here. It's a free plugin for WordPress and uh, you can custom tailor both the meta description and the pages title for each of the posts. So that's pretty good stuff. Uh, does the keyword start the meta description? You might want to stay away from this. Um, while it might sound good to do, uh, it might come as an over optimization signal. So, you know, just, just place the keyword somewhere in the meta description. Um, does the LSI keyword appear in the title? That's also a consideration that uh, you can take into account, uh, especially if you're not using the exact match keyword. I mean, I would use the exact match keyword, but then again, um, LSI match keyword is fine as well in, in the page title if you don't have the exact match one. Um, but if you do just use the LSI match one, uh, try to start the, key, the the title with your LSI keyword. Then of course the LSI keyword in the meta description, um, you know, uh, it's it's uh, it's also a good relevancy signal to have it in there. Uh, now the LSI keyword starting the meta description is far better than the LSI than the exact match keyword starting the meta description because it sounds more natural and organic because it's an LSI keyword. Um, so it doesn't sound like it's something that's keyword stuffed. Uh, keywords in the H1 tag, uh, try to put your key, you know, at least once the keywords in the H1 tag, you know, this is a, a strong relevancy signal. Uh, try to make it start the H1 tag, number 60, number 61. Um, keywords in the H2 and H3 tags, you know, are those, are those present there? Uh, you could put this in, but, you know, it also could signal over optimization, so you could, uh, you know, default to the LSI versions. So, uh, you know, number 62 LSI keyword in the H1 tag. Another relevancy signal LSI keywords starting the H1 tag, LSI keywords in the H2 and H3 tag. And then, of course, there's the starting the H2 or H3 tag. But, you know, uh, H2 and H3 tags are, you know, secondary, not as important as the H1 tag. So it's not as important there if it's starting it or not. The page structure, what's the overall layout quality? Now, you know, you guys have seen tons of websites by now. You know if something is aesthetically pleasing or not uh, and functional as well. You know, okay, it looks nice, but is it easy to find the stuff that we're looking for? Uh, or it's easy to find stuff that's that we're looking for, but it looks, you know, not so nice. Um, so, you know, try to, try, to, try to ensure that it's both aesthetically pleasing and functional. Section your content off, make it easy to read. You know, you know use the headings and uh, paragraphs that aren't too big and aren't too small. Um, I'm sure you've guys read a ton, tons of blogs. You know, go and find blogs that uh, you really love and, ta and take careful look at, you know, how they write the page content, how they set section stuff off and make it, you know, nice and appealing. And then use bullet points, number 67. Bullet points and lists are great. Uh, you know, in fact, a great piece of content marketing is actually doing an elongated list post, you know, which is like, you know, top 100 ways to, uh, you know, uh, fly for free or something like that. Uh, people love those lists, you know, um, uh, 53 ways you know that, uh, you know, it's time for a new job, so on and so forth. Uh, so people love lists. WordPress tags, this is a weak relevancy signal, number 68. Uh, you know, you know what the tags are. Just just make sure if you use, you're use using WordPress tags, don't use irrelevant tags. Uh, make sure the tags are very relevant. Uh, and then priority of the page and the sitemap. If you haven't generated a sitemap, you know, make sure you do that in XML one and the HTML one. So, but uh, getting back to number 69, you know, the, what's the priority of the page in the sitemap? You know, how high up is it in the hierarchy? Uh, so that's an important consideration. Keyword stuffing, be careful of overusing your keywords uh, in your content. Uh, make sure it's not, uh, you know, unnaturally sounding. 
Uh, everything should sound organic and uh, sound really, really good. Don't put invisible text with CSS trying to stuff keywords. You know, that's keyword stuffing. Google hates that and you will get demoted, possibly de-indexed. Uh, don't try to place the, the trick Google and place the text far away from the page. You know, Google will find it uh, and it will demote you for it. Then website architecture, you know, how many pages deep is the website? You know, deeper websites indicate higher quality because, you know, things have been flushed out a little bit more. You know, more time has been spent, you know, delivering high quality val uh, value. You know, of course, if the site has high quality value. Now, sitemap, go and generate an XML and HTML one. Click on the link for uh, an XML sitemap. Website uptime, be very careful of your uptime. You know, if you're on a shared hosting account, uh, and you start getting some good traffic, your, your website might might start, uh, you know, not responding so well. Uh, so at that point, you know, move it to, um, you know, a VPS or something like that. But also monitor your site for hacking. SSL certificate, I talked about this already. Uh, you know, get an SSL certificate. You could probably get one for about $69, I think, at GoDaddy. Or, you know, you can try another resource, but, you know, for the year. But whatever you whatever you pick, just get it. Get an SSL certificate and install it. Um, there's some HT access changes that you need to make actually in WordPress. You can also uh, download the the SSL uh, plugin, which will uh, help you kind of convert everything over to SSL. It'll add some stuff into your HT access. So the TOS and privacy pages, pages uh, terms of service and privacy pages. You know, especially if you're collecting user da data through website cookies, that's important. Breadcrumb navigation. Um, it's nice to have breadcrumb navigation. Uh, you know, that's kind of when you see, uh, um, you know, you can jump back and forth between sections uh, on a site. I, I think it's more applicable to an e-commerce website, but uh, it's still pretty good. For example, let, let's say you have a section on SEO and you're breaking it up into on-page and off-page. You know, if you're in the off-page SEO section and within a section within that section, then you can easily jump back to SEO or off-page optimization and see all the articles maybe. Well, that's that's always pretty good for people. Uh, make the site easy to navigate, of course. Use Google Analytics and use Google Webmaster Tools. Like these are two relevancy signals. Google likes when you use them because it can see what's going on. You know, it can see how much time people are spending on your site. You know, what's the bounce rate? What's the exit rate? So get those set up and install them for sure. Use them. Uh, duplicate content. Never duplicate content, even even across your website. So. You know, if you're duplicating pages of content, you know, if you have, you know, one paragraph on a page and you're putting that paragraph, you know, at the top of many different pages, it's not good. Don't ever duplicate content. You know, write something unique always. Don't duplicate meta content. I think that duplicated meta content is a little more common. Don't do that. What's the website speed, the desktop and mobile load speeds? These are really, really important. Go to the Google Developers Page Insight tool. It will uh, allow you to kind of research that and it'll give you recommendations on what to do and how to change stuff. Uh, Google Chrome load speed, you know, Google looks at how fast the website loads on Chrome. Page URLs, canonical URLs, uh, is the URL a canonical URL? Um, you know, this is a user that, this is a URL that user, uh, user uh, that you want visitors, visitors to see, sorry, especially if there's duplicate versions of the URL. For example, if you are, uh, you know, developing a site that has, uh, uh, you know, a page with variables and stuff after it, and then you have an HT access version of that that's showing uh, a, a, a friendly URL. Uh, you want to have canonical URLs. It's uh, the REL uh, canonical in the coding. So the keyword in the URL, um, does the primary keyword appear in the URL? You can actually, in WordPress, you can turn on the post names option under the permalink section in settings, and that will you know, make it so you don't have the, uh, you don't have like that date and stuff, you know, the year and the month and stuff. Uh, I never really liked that, but it just has your, just translates your post name into the URL name, which is pretty handy for SEO. Keyword starts to URL. Um, this is, uh, this is definitely a good relevancy signal. LSI keyword in the URL, also a good relevancy signal. Um, LSI keyword starting the URL, another good relevancy signal. URL length, Google doesn't want to find a URL that's too, too long, uh, but it doesn't want you to make it too short. It just wants it the right length so that uh, when a visitor visits it, they have a general idea of what to expect. Uh, URL path, make sure it's a relevant URL path. Um, URL string, 
Uh, Google's not going to read past the first URL, variable in a URL string after that question mark, for example, at .php question mark. It'll read that, but it won't read anything after that. So just try to try to do um, URL friendly URLs using the HT access file or that post name uh, with WordPress if you're just using WordPress. Mobile friendly, you know, we've kind of covered this stuff. We want the site to be mobile friendly. Uh, because of course, if you remember the mobile get on update uh, back in April of 2015 is important. And then you want to have the mobile site optimized. You know, if you click on that Google Developer Insight tool, it will actually give you recommendations to uh, to optimize the the mobile site, which is great too.